I shaped the history of Middle Earth. I crafted the rings of power. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then Empire Magazine's Galadriel cover will tell you all you need to know about Amazon's rings of power. The devil is in the detail, my friends. Look closely and you'll see a massacre of mythology. Prime has left their filthy fingerprints all over Tolkien's beloved legendarium. And come September 2nd, it's going to be up to you to decide their fate. Do we honor Tolkien or leave him to the wolves? Welcome, my friends. I hope you're having a magnificent day. This is the Rings of Power Rodeo Roundup, where we're going to bring together every red-nosed Amazon clown and every J.J. Abrams acolyte. We're going to watch how high that a billion dollars can stack bullshit. How tall are you, Private? Sir, five foot nine, sir! Five foot nine? I didn't know they stacked shit that high. From the very first Vanity Fair article, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay have been pushing one singular message, that they are completely love Tolkien's Aeon Arda. The flame imperishable burns within their heart. But love is proven by action indeed. Real love, true passion, is infectious. It infects everyone around you, from a grip on the production staff to a leading actress. My dream role to play, I've been lucky enough to have already played it on stage, um, which is Blodeweth, um, which is a story from the Mabinogi, the Welsh um, legends and folk tales about this woman who was created for a man who couldn't marry a woman from the realm of men. And she's made out of flowers and she's wild, just like the seasons and can't be tamed. You heard that. What did you think of that when a leading actress is asked by a major magazine, what's your dream role? During the production of the series that she's a star of, and she picks another character. Houston, we have a problem. I'm going to show you how much the J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay hate the professor's role. Then you will have the evidence to fight the good fight. They worked with Empire Magazine to take Galadriel and pose her with a vagus spread where all of a sudden she's now a cheap witcher fantasy monster hunter knockoff. They gave her a fine giant final fantasy sword, and then they gave her armored gauntlets with metallic fingernails. What the hell is she going to do with those? But I told you, the devil is in the details. Metallic fingernails, what you going to do? Fight the ice troll in one hand while she's foregoing her first age vows to the love of her life, Celeborn, on the other, so she could speed date on Middle Earth matchup? Durin, I just want to shut down the yeah. uh, wedding to Celeborn. I'm telling you, Galadriel Ooh. is not getting married for another few seasons. Oh, okay. Galadriel okay. is going to be young and fun. Hashtag fidelity to Tolkien. Professor Tolkien didn't have her sitting in a burger joint having a date with somebody and then change her mind and go and hang out with Celebrimbor oh later on. Goodness. Or with uh, uh, Celeborn, rather. I meant to say Celeborn. But Amazon didn't stop there. They continued vandalizing races and characters. They started with the Harfoots. You got these hairy, the homeless dumpster, diving porter, potty, proto-hobbits who are supposed to be hiding in the Second Age during the wandering years. But they're creating a paradox here. They're going to bring them front and center to take the Second Age plot line, to be the stars of it. They're going to be these migrating nomads who are also agrarian farmers with their crops. And then they have a sealed door. They decided, you know what? He needs a sister. So they hired actress Eva Hormath. And they created a character called Corrine. And she's going to subvert Anadia. But they're not done. Then we have the contradiction-walking old man Celebrimbor, the forger of the rings himself, who looks old enough in grandmother's curtains to be Galadriel's father when he's actually her younger half-cousin. And I couldn't think of anything else. I couldn't think of anything else but Carol Burnett in the, <laughs> the Gone with the Wind sketch. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's all I could think of. What brings you to Terra? 
You, you vixen, you. Stop it. I love you. That, that, that gown is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I saw it in the window and I just couldn't resist it. I'm so sorry. Uh, but it's the curtains. It just looks like curtains to me. <laughs> oh my gosh, curtains. I'm sorry. And then you have Galadriel herself. They decided, let's salt the wound a little bit more. And they gave her a new brother. Not the one you know, but the evil one Tolkien never wrote about. Now, you're going to be upset, but don't be mad. This is something you laugh about. See, Amazon is trying to use cultural vandalism in order to get along with their new buddies in Hollywood. But no matter what they do, they cannot butcher the professor's masterwork of mythology. All J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay can do is prove their hatred and make fools of themselves. And right now, they're becoming world champs at doing that. And if this is your first time here, I invite you, take a second, push the subscribe button down below, and join us as we hold the line of the Legendarium. We didn't want to do the TV version of Lord of the Rings, says McKay. We wanted to do a story in Middle Earth that deserves its own space on the shelf, alongside the novels and films. You know, these guys haven't learned a thing since they told Vanity Fair they were writing the novel Tolkien never wrote. Pride, ego, narcissism, hubris. What's up with them? All they had to simply state is, we're making this fantasy series. We're trying to do our best to adapt Tolkien, and we hope that one day that it could stand on the same shelf with all the rest of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit series. Not the books. They're not equal to Tolkien and never will be. Payne explains poetically. In his letters, particularly in one to his publisher, Tolkien talked about wanting to leave behind a mythology that left scope for other minds and hands, wielding the tools of paint, music, and drama. We're doing what Tolkien wanted. As long as we felt like every invention of ours was true to his essence, we knew we were on the right track. You know, again, they're not learning. You think like a carpenter who started two years ago would be 24 months later much better. The same would go for a showrunner or a human being who's having to communicate with people how they want to express their love about Tolkien. See, it's the little details that always show you who a person is and if they're being false or true. They took Tolkien out of context there in order to justify all their changes. But Tolkien wrote in letter 131 to his publisher, Milton Waldman, here's the full quote. I would draw some of the great tales in fullness and leave many only placed in the scheme and sketched. The cycle should be linked to a majestic coal and yet leave scope for other minds and hands, wielding paint and music and drama. Absurd. Absurd. That's the word that McCain and Pay left out because Tolkien wanted everyone to use the space between words, the material that he didn't write about. He wanted your imagination to flourish, to fill it in. He didn't intend for Amazon Prime and the Bobsy Twins to come along and make some bad Numenorean fan fiction series. No, that's why they left out absurd. Quote, what's a different thing that we can do that still feels like Middle Earth, but is unique for this story, asks Payne. Quote, the show has a lot of action in it, more so than any television or streaming show that we've seen. Every episode has set pieces, creatures, battles, and white knuckle fights to the death, adds McKay. And that's exactly why Bezos brought on Brian Cogman from Game of Thrones. He wanted to create Wheel of Time version two. He wants his HBO Game of Thrones, but what he's getting is HBO season seven and eight. Lenny Henry feels the show's impact could be profound. Growing up in the West Midlands, a stone's throw from where Tolkien grew up, he loved fantasy, but felt alienated by the exclusion of people of color. The Rings of Power's more diverse cast offers a welcome course correct for the genre. He says, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Finally, in this show, kids are going to see people of color taking up space in the center of a fantasy series. We're very visible in this world, and that's very exciting. Lenny Henry is confusing fiction 
and mythology. See, a fictional series, some people read it just to enjoy it, but a lot of people, when they read the characters, they want to see themselves in the hero or in the villains. But a mythology, see, a mythology predates fiction. It's about legends, and it speaks to specific cultures. If we're talking about the ancient Greek gods of Zeus and Athena and Hercules, we're talking about the Hellenic ancient peoples of Greece. We're not talking about the Hopi Indians or the Navajos who are praying to Wakantanka. We're not talking about the Hindu each culture has their own mythology. And in the same way, Tolkien wanted to create a mythology for his beloved England. This is what many people confuse about it. Now we have so much more to cover in the videos to come. I'm going to break down the Harfoots, all the new characters. Because see, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay loved Tolkien so very much that they created 15 new original characters so far. So far. And so far, they've only used 10 that Tolkien wrote. And we're going to cover those in the series to come. But today, I want you to take comfort. I want you to feel good that regardless of how much Amazon tries to vandalize Tolkien's work, they cannot do it. All they've ended up doing is spending millions of dollars creating whisper campaigns to boost the image of their series. And all that has led to is a renewed interest from new readers around the world of all ages in the Tolkien's Middle Earth masterpiece. Thank you, Amazon Prime, for spending so much money to bring so many people to Tolkien and the Fellowship. Do you think this is some tribute to love, or is it a testament to, hey, you make that decision? But I'll tell you one thing. Amazon has used the darkness to do their best, their damnedest to snuff out the light. And the more they try, the brighter it burns. And if you want to take that candlelight and turn it into a roaring flame, you remember that we never bow down. We never bend the knee. Firmly define. Step up, stand tall, and get busy living your best life now. Always forward. I was shining my shoes, getting ready for my very first date after I had worked for my first car. This was a girl I was head over heels for. And just as I'm putting on that final shine, my mom gets philosophical. I'm like, you have any advice? She's like, have fun, but be yourself. Anything else is just a waste of time. So as I'm slowly walking out the front door, going to the car, she like kind of gives me this little like love slap because she's like, wake up, wake up. You're going to get into a wreck. Your head's in the clouds. I'm like, All right. She goes, what are you thinking about? Always the girl, the girl, the girl. I said, yeah. And she goes, that's fine. But she goes, if this doesn't work out, no, there are other fish in the sea. You know, if it's not this one, you're probably going to date a dozen, 20 dozen times. And you're going to find the girl you love. And I said, how do you know? She said, you know, we've never really talked about it. She goes, real love. It honors you. It lifts you up. It's there for you during good times and bad times. She goes, she goes, any idiot can love during the holidays. It's during all the stormy weather. That's when it counts. But she goes, real love doesn't want to change you. It wants you to be the best you can be of who you are. She goes, anytime someone tells you they love you, but they go, they want to go, eh, you got to do this, you got to do that. They don't love you. They have this idea of you. They have another image of who you are. They want that person, not who's standing in front of them. I'm like, okay. She's like, remember this, unconditional love, real unconditional love. You'll know at the very moment that someone you care about, you get into one of those like knock down, drag out curse fights that you don't want to see them for a year and you want to yell and curse at them for like two years longer. And at that very second, they need you. They want a shoulder to cry on, one to lean on. They just want to talk to you or they're sick, whatever it is. You set aside what your anger, your disappointment or hurt is, and you let that bond that you built rise to the surface in your heart. And if you can do that, that's unconditional love. I'm like, okay. And she said, you will always know. 
Love, when you feel it, it's like getting sick. You want to spread it, though. It's differently than like a flu. You want to share it with everyone. It's like a song you can't get out of your head. And I said, how do you tell those who are lying about it? She goes, it's easy to see because it's all word and no action. It's all false notes. I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking about that now. And right before I was getting into my car for my day, and I'm like, you have Amazon Prime and J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. Do you know what's going to sink them? All their continuous pomp about loving Tolkien. But when you look at their actions, when you look at their details, they keep changing it. One change after another. They made 15 new characters for their show and only kept so far 10 that come from Tolkien's legendary. And I'm thinking back to my mother. And she told me, real love, true love, true passion, it elevates that which you love beyond yourself, above oneself. So I'm in the car, I turn it on. She's like, you remember Star Wars? You love it? I said, yes, I love it. She goes, do you want anything to change about it? I go, no, not a second. But you want more of it, right? I'm like, yeah. There you go.